Hi everyone, we are once again Luke and Slide and this is Science of Victory. We've made quite a few episodes of the show already and we've learned a lot of interesting things from Slide during this time. But now it's time to talk about playing on particular maps. Wait, not just play, but how to win on them. We start this part of the series on Cliff. By the way, starting from the next episode, our show fully moves to our official Competitive Team Battles channel. It's just the right time to subscribe to it if you haven't already. Cliff, an open map with lots of hills, bushes and trees. One of the most dynamic locations in the team battle map pool. It's best to play with a mobile setup here. Plus you really need some vehicles with good elevation angles. Currently, there is not much of a choice as in team battles, the commanders have to pick a setup without knowing which map they will play, unlike tournaments. The developers promise that the situation will soon change, but for now, we will learn to play with an all-purpose setup and revisit this problem later. I will remind you that this setup consists of two T1s, two AMX 5100s, a pair of Soviet IS-3s and a 90, of course. Today we will review the basics of playing from the self-spawn. The battle starts. It's time to remember Slide's advice from the last episode to analyze the enemy setup first. There are a couple of extra important things for this map. The main one is, does the enemy have a fast tank, like a 90 or a WZ-132? If not, then we send a scout to the bush in E6. His main goal is not to shoot, but to spot. He will see almost all enemies coming up the hill. Your 90 will remain unseen until it shoots. Well, or until one of the enemies drive up really close to it. If our heavies manage to get into position in time, they will be able to deal great damage thanks to the 90's vision. It will be easy to finish the battle after that. If they can't make it in time, then the scout can deal some quick damage themselves. Pick an easy target, shoot and hide behind a rock. Don't get too excited, or you might be down a tank early. Sometimes the 90 gets to the bush and sees no one. This means that the enemy is attacking through the first line or is just staying under the hill near their base. This is the best for you. In this case, our team is in control of most of the map and can occupy the high ground, which is very important in positional warfare. Try to spot the opponents with your light tanks and damage them with heavies from afar. Let's move on. If the enemy has slow vehicles, you can be even more daring. Send heavies on the usual route and send a scout to D4 through the second line. It will not only see the enemy, but will also be able to unload his drum on them unharmed. Whilst the enemy is distracted, the heavies attack from the center. The opponents have just lost lots of HP and are pinned down in a very uncomfortable spot. The outcome is clear. Another situation. The enemy has a TD. It would be perfect to get rid of it fast. So if you see a Borsig, then he is the number one target. Shoot it first in any case. First, this will take out the most dangerous gun on the enemy, and second, damaging a Borsig is much easier than any other tier eight vehicle. It's not a problem if you couldn't spot the TD in the beginning. Remember that the Borsig is probably standing on the hill in A5 or in the bushes in A6. Keep this in mind when planning your attack to not take unnecessary damage. The harder situation is still when the enemy's setup is similar to yours. So let's talk about this a bit more. First, let's have a look at the common game situations and learn how to come out on top. So the enemy has two T1s, a 90 and four other tier eights. We send our T1s to scout the flanks. Hide one in the bushes in G1 and send the other one to the position in G9. The heavies go to the center, as well as the 90. This time we don't place him in the bush. It's too dangerous because the enemy light tank is close and is probably proxying ours. So we scout the enemy team from the hill and do this very carefully. The heavies shoot using the light's recon when they can. The current objective is to stay away from damage. So the standard positions look exactly like this. Now let's see how you should attack different enemy formations. Case 1. Two enemy tanks under the hill in E6. Two more are seen in the D5 region. 
We don't know where the fifth is, but if he wasn't seen, he's probably in A5. Our actions. Our 90 scares his opposing number and we prepare to rush towards D5 through the fifth line. The heavy's goal is to get to a position near the hill fast and destroy the enemy tanks in E6. It's crucial to stay away from the area that exposes you between A5 and D5. We do this. Four of us kill two enemies fast. Now we prepare for a counterattack by the rest of them. If they attack, we try to catch them in a crossfire since we have a 90 in the center. If the enemies don't attack, it's even better. We reload and finish them off. Case 2. Four enemies are under the hill in E6 to E7. One more tank is in D5. We're in for a long and positional combat. Here our scout on the right flank sees an enemy T1 and he's not alone. The opponents have split their forces and we can't wait. We rush to E6 with all tier 8s. Yes, we open our side to their tank in D5. But we manage to destroy two tanks at E6 before we are flanked. Now the point is to cover allies and focus down the outnumbered enemies. This is a winning situation. This situation will be harder if the enemy don't split their forces. When this happens, the 90 should carefully scout from the hill. The IS-3s stay hold down on the 5 line and the 5100s avoid damage whilst covering the ISs from the tank in D5. If such a battle is going for a long time and things are going towards a tie, then you can take a risk if you didn't lose much HP. Keep in mind that in this situation, it is easier to defend than attack. Oh, and about the T1. If the enemy has no tier 1s, then you can easily send yours to the enemy base through the first line. To do this, send one first. If it's spotted, then some enemies remain near the base and we should rush the high ground. If no one spots our scout, send the second one in after it. Place them one after the other on the edge of the cap circle and wait. As soon as someone shoots at the T1s, rush in with your main forces. The enemy will have to fight you and defend the base at the same time. This is a great opportunity for victory. That's all for today. Of course we didn't have time to review all the puzzles of Cliff, but at least now you can solve the main ones with ease. In our next episode, we'll talk about playing from the second base. Post your questions in the comments. If you like this video, like it. And remember, this is our last episode on the World of Tanks com channel, so subscribe to our new channel, WG Esports, to be notified of the next episode. That's all, folks. See you.